Dog in the Midlands area, are you able to accept over? Are you friendly? Yeah, you just want a bit of loving, don't you? It could be a scold from boiling right. water. Horrible. Oh, sausage. Right now, there are dogs that need help. We don't get many toy Yorkies stuck in TV cabinets now. And there are heroes who are dedicated to saving them. I don't want to leave any animal in there. Why would you allow those dogs to look like that? Transforming their lives. It sounds like she's in a lot of distress. The nurse in me wanted to make him better. She just can't believe how lucky she is. <laughs> Finding them forever homes. I feel like a lucky boy. She deserves it after what she's been through. I think he's my guardian angel. Aren't you, mate? And giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. Him giving them that little ray of hope. They are the dog rescuers. Without a shadow of a doubt, this is why I do this job. Hello and welcome to the dog rescuers. In this brand new series, we've got more riveting rescues with all your favorite inspectors, as well as loads of fantastic dogs like Kane and Kaya here. That's it, you've parked up in exactly the right place. That's not all, there's a new addition to the team, Angelica Bell. On today's show, we salute those people going that extra mile to help dogs in need. From helping a homeless man and his four-legged friend to turn in detective to rescue these two. Took some finding, didn't you? Coming up, caught on camera being abused by her owner, Inspector Anthony Joins rushes to the rescue. There's no way I'm leaving anything in harm's way to be battered like that again. Inspector Anthony Pulfer steps in to help a homeless man's best friend with a nasty neck wound. Oh. All right, buddy. Yeah, all right. All yeah, that needs to be seen by a vet tonight. And I'm finding out all about therapy dogs as I join rescued Rolo on his hospital rounds. On Merseyside, Inspector Anthony Joins is working on a disturbing case of a dog that was physically abused by her owner in public. I've spent the last week or so gathering evidence on a, on a job that came in um, from members of the public that basically had witnessed a, a man beating his dog up in the street. I managed to make my way to the location and it was all over. There was no witnesses around. I managed to go out and get hold of some CCTV from the local shop. It doesn't make for pretty viewing. The CCTV also revealed the incident that led to the beating. He's been in the street with two dogs, and one of the dogs has slipped its lead and ran towards um, a guide dog, and shown some sort of aggression towards the guide dog. The incident is over literally within a split second, and the guide dog appears to be absolutely fine. But when the dog is given back to her owner, he turns on her. As this begin to walk away, CCTV quite helpfully has caught him a, a literally a full force punch to the back of the head of the dog. It's quite distressing to watch, and the dog falls to the ground. And then in the very corner of the CCTV shot, it's lying down, and you can see that it's absolutely terrified. And he's got his face right in the dog's face, and then he hits it again. Then as he goes out of shot of the CCTV camera, the, the attack apparently continues right the way down the street with numerous kicks and punches on this on this dog. If you've got somebody who's willing to do that sort of brutal physical violence against an animal in the street with people shouting at him to stop, blood curl, and when you think, what, what could be happening behind closed doors if the dog does something wrong? So we've got to get those dogs away. The upsetting footage and witness statements have resulted in the police issuing a warrant to seize the dogs. Both Kaya and Kane are at home with their owner. I've seen the CCTV footage, yeah. so I so is the officer, so is the, the court this morning. There's four, there's four witnesses as well who've, who've witnessed you beating the dog down the road. Under the warrant, these dogs are going to be seized today and they're going to be coming with me. Beating of dogs. I work in an area, unfortunately, where it happens a lot. And um, that 
is one of the things that angers me the most. I just think that when you become physically violent towards your, your dog, that's it, you've crossed the line. There's so many different ways that you can deal with a dog's bad behavior, basic training, and to become physically abusive and violent is just, is um, not acceptable at all. Anthony brings out the first of the dogs and the one that was attacked. 12-year-old uh, uh, Staffordshire Bull Terrier, Kaya. Silly, isn't it? Come on, buddy. This is a dog that was beaten all the way down this street and beaten outside the shop as well, so um, it's good. It's good I'm made up that we've got her. I'm going to take the other one as well because there's no way I'm leaving anything in harm's way to be battered like that again. The evidence speaks for itself, so they're coming with me, simple as that. second dog as well. The other dog is also a staffy, older brother Kane. You look like a little old boy, don't you, buddy? You look like an old boy. Come on in, let's go. And he's carrying some unwelcome passengers. You're absolutely covered in fleas, buddy. Look at them, horrible things. Hey? Hey? You got fleas? We sort that out for you straight away. Let's go and get in. Here's your friend. Don't worry. Here's your friend. Come on then, buddy. Jump in. Jump in. Oh, good boy. With the dogs now safe in the van, Anthony goes back to interview the owner. The evidence on its own is enough to prosecute you. How many times can you remember? Yeah. Do you think it's acceptable to physically beat a dog? No. No. While the owner admits to hitting Kaya, he says he'd been drinking and can't recall if he did anything else. He's reluctant to sign over the dogs. He's basically admitted to remembering smacking Kaya twice, but he says that might have been to do with how drunk he was and his memory and his stress at the time. For all I know, it might be a, it might have been a one-off. I, I still don't think there's any, ever a reasonable excuse to, you know, drag a dog down the road, kicking and punching it, no matter what's going on in your life. I think it's um, abhorrent behaviour and uh, and. Uh, you know, I want to make sure that it doesn't happen again. The next step for this friendly pair is a trip to the vets, where Kaya will be examined for any lasting injuries from her attack. <laughs> Anthony Joins has just rescued two staffies seized from their owner by the police. Good girl. 12-year-old Kaya was caught on CCTV being punched by her owner. What a traumatic experience for such a gentle girl. Fleas. You've got fleas as well? You've got fleas as well? Come on. She's beautiful. It took Anthony just over a week to track down Kaya and get a warrant, but she's safe now, and vet Holly Jones will see if she's suffered any long-term injuries. Hello. Hi. This is Kaya. Hey, girl. Hello, Kaya. Maybe have a look and see whether there's any obvious yeah. signs of bruising or anything consistent with what she went through. Yeah. Um, it's a good girl. Good girl. Sometimes you can tell with bruising, you'd see red marks, just like in people, you'd see it under the skin, but a week later, the bruising's probably cleared up and any swelling or, or heat or pain anywhere. She came in quite bouncy, which is a good sign. She's quite happy and comfortable. There's just a, a little red mark there, but that looks more like where a collar might have been rubbing her rather than bruising or a scratch. Well, she's, she's got fleas. She's got one there. That's nice for you. Great. Oh, there's one under my nail. There's a little blighter there. Right, sweetheart, let's get you a flea treatment. Oh, she's a beautiful girl. I know. A good girl. And that will kill all those nasty fleas. It's okay. She's a good girl. It's okay. okay. Just stick to me there. Is that nice? She was in really good condition, considering what we saw on the CCTV, where you could see her being actually physically punched. There was no signs of any bruising, any swelling anywhere, which is good, and she was in generally good condition, apart from those fleas. Come on, then. Good news for Kaya, then. Hey, buddy. 
Her older brother, Kane, was unharmed in the incident, but is also considered at risk. Let's go. Come on, buddy. Hello. This is Kane. He's um, full of life for a 15-year-old dog. He doesn't look 15 either. He's just got a grey face, haven't he? Don't old Bambi. Hello. Hi. You're a bit leaner, aren't you? Yeah, he's a bit yeah. lean, yeah. You're OK, though, yeah. And he's crawling in our little friends as well. Oh, you have. You've got hundreds See of them. them. Oh, yeah. You can see where his coat's thinning around his tail base, and that's where he's been scratching because in there are hundreds of fleas. See all those fleas moving in there? Poor hmm. Kane definitely needs treatment to get rid of those fleas. And there's something else that needs to go too, by the looks of things. He could have done it being muted, couldn't he? A long time yeah. ago. Yeah, they're, they're quite prominent, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Hey? You proud of yourself. Yes. Come here, buddy. Kane? Showing them off, Come aren't you? Come on. Thanks, so. Kane's doing absolutely fine. There's no signs of any injuries to him either. He's a really happy, bouncy, lively dog, considering his age, apart from his fleas, which has got slightly worse than the other dog. The two lively staffies are now on their way to Wirral Animal Centre, where they'll be looked after, while Anthony prepares the case against their owner. They're really close, aren't they? Yeah. Don't worry, she's there. She's there. Wait, 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 wait. Um, come on. Go on, buddy. Go on, buddy. Go on, buddy. Yes, well done. Should we go? Go, go girl. girl. It's okay. Hopefully, it's onwards and upwards for this friendly pair. Get some water. This guy's obviously made a catastrophic error and lost both of these really beautiful dogs. I'll sleep better tonight knowing that I've got two dogs out of a situation where they were at risk of violence. No more though, buddies. No more violence. The big softies. The big soft. We'll see what the future holds for this dynamic duo later. <laughs> hey, get off. That's enough love for today. Over in South East London, Inspector Anthony Pulfer is also showing some love for a dog in need. It's 6pm and Anthony is following up on a call from a member of the public about a collapsed Labrador that belongs to a homeless man. Hello. Oh, hi, is that Kirsty? Yeah, it's speaking. RSPCA inspector. Um, oh, hello there. I just wanted to catch yeah, you before you close. What's the dog doing? Is it laying down? It's just laying down. He got attacked by another dog the other day, and he was fine. And last night, or something, a lump come up. Okay. And he's just got worse today. Right. All right. Tell him I'm going to come over, and I'll be there within thirty minutes. All right. I'll let him know. Thank you very much. Anton is heading to Greenwich, where the dog and his homeless owner are waiting. Just hoping this dog's not at a stage where it's too late or it's suffering greatly now. We're losing light as well. Hopefully we can find him. It's estimated that over 4,500 people were sleeping rough in the UK last year. For a number of these, pet dogs provide essential respite from loneliness. Dogs are really just amazing. You know, the loyalty they give to an owner and uh, you know, they become that lifelong friend. Uh, really, that's quite special. In an emergency case like this, they need the help of a charity to get treatment for their four-legged friends. Hello, buddy. Hello, right, mate. How are you doing? You all right? OK, my name's Anthony. I'm one of the inspectors for the RSPCA. Hi, sir, what's the dog's name? Joshi. OK. Let's have a look what you're worried about. She got bit. OK. That's all the pus coming out of her neck. Yeah, OK, that's... It's quite miserable, isn't it? OK. The owner has been trying to treat Josie himself by cleaning her wound with antibacterial wipes, but he's worried the infection will spread. She needs to be... Sorry, baby. Sorry. Sorry. All right, buddy. She's all, right. all floppy. Yeah. That needs to be seen by a vet tonight, because that's quite a bad hole. 
what you realise as RSPs inspectors, you can't you can't save the well, save the dogs, all dogs you know about. But the one you've got in front of you, if you can change that animal's life in the short term, you feel you've done the right job that day, and, and ultimately you've improved animals' welfare. Josie's been registered with the local charitable vets, half an hour away. Oh hi, it's Anthony. I've come to a homeless person with a Labrador. His, his dog's been attacked by a dog. So Anthony arranges to take her there. I just I just want to get this dog some treatment tonight, you know. All right, I'll pop down with this dog, Josie, and we'll go from there. Thanks for your help. She's come with me. If you can help me get her in the van. Just round the call here, OK? Cheers, buddy. Go on, up. Do you like that? Oh, bless. Good girl. OK. Kiss, kiss. Kiss, kiss, buddy. Good girl. Good girl. Very obedient. Thanks, buddy. Hopefully the dog can come back here tonight and we can return the dog to the owner. <sighs> See how we get on, really. Let's hope the infection from Josie's nasty wound hasn't spread. We'll be back with her later. Dogs are rescued from all kinds of terrible situations. Many are abandoned, others left to starve, and some live in constant pain. But time and time again, they bounce back, and their ability to love and trust is remarkable, as Angelica Bell discovers. We know that rescue dogs can make amazing pets and have a unique ability to form powerful bonds with us. Now, while some rescue dogs are happy completing that family jigsaw, there are others who have bigger roles to play, and I'm about to meet one of them. Hi, Claire. Hi. 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 How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice well, to meet thank you. you. Sit nice down and take you. a seat. This is Rolo. Hello, Rolo. So what breed is he? He is half Springer Spaniel and half Miniature Poodle. So they call that either a Springer Poo or a Sprudel. Sprudel. I like that name. In December 2013, a very ill Rolo was one of 30 dogs rescued from appalling conditions on a puppy farm. He was lucky to survive, but thankfully he pulled through and at 12 weeks old, he went to live with Claire. He's not just a family pet, is he? He's not just a family pet. He works as a therapy dog. And what does it mean to be a therapy dog? Well, every week we go to the local hospital and he visits lots and lots of different patients and actually helps them to get better. As soon as we walk into a ward, you can feel and see the atmosphere lift. He has this little bib. Would you like to put it on? That'd be great. Good boy. Good boy. I'm keen to see Rolo in action. So I'm joining him as he does his weekly rounds at Southend Hospital. Today he's visiting the stroke ward, where he's a familiar face. Hello. 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 First up is one of his regulars. Hello. Hello. Mrs. Hewitt? Yeah. So how do you feel when you see Rolo? Good. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's quite soothing to stroke him, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. And also, obviously, because she has some difficulty saying some words sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. He doesn't actually need any words from you, does he? No. Well, I can see he's made a look at your face. You're just beaming, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Consultant Dr Paul Guiler feels pet-assisted therapy can be of real benefit to his stroke patients. Yeah, so they've got a problem maybe moving their arm, sort of uh, patting or stroking the dog or brushing, and it will mean that that's actually sort of physical rehabilitation therapy they're doing. Let's go, bye! Bye, bye, bye! Next on Rolo's rounds is stroke sufferer Alan Brackett. So this is your son, Anthony. It's lovely to meet you both. So tell me a bit about your dad, what happened? Six Alan. weeks ago to the day. We were um, at Stamford Bridge watching Chelsea play football. Got towards the end of the game. And um, I said, shall we shoot now before the crowds leave? And I just noticed he was a little bit unsteady on his feet. His left side became a bit weak. Rushed to Charing Cross Hospital to discover he'd had a uh, major bleed on the uh, right side of his head. Yeah. And here we are, six weeks later, basically. Well, he loves Rolo. I've yes. heard that, you know, he's got a real affinity to him. You know, how do you think that that's helping him? I think it's a bit of a normality, to be fair. Mm -hmm. he, he does love dogs. He's got a dog at home. Mm -hmm. Rolo. Rolo. That's Rolo. They're talking about your dog at home, yeah. buddy, aren't they? His buddy. Rolo. 
Do you want to give him a treat? Oh. <laughs> and you can't bring Buddy here, obviously. No, Buddy can't be here. Yeah. So this is just a nice, you know, oh, alternative. Yeah. So do you think therapy like this is just invaluable? Oh, absolutely. So obviously, my dad's loving it, and the dog's yeah. liking it as well. So yeah, it's all good. Can you use both his hands? His left side has been really affected. So he's very weak down his left side, which I think is probably for Rolo's best that side because it's going to encourage the yes. stimulation on his yeah, left Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You are doing really well. Your foot started moving the first time, didn't it, on Friday? It did, didn't it? We kicked a little bit of the football, didn't we? We did. So, so Chelsea, Chelsea, we're going to ring you up in a minute. <laughs> 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 Must be desperate. <laughs> It's just really, it's really just encouraging to see how Rolo impacts these patients' lives. I mean, they've had life-changing things happen to them and just him giving them that little ray of hope is just amazing. Just really is amazing. I'm just a bit overwhelmed. This amazing dog also helps patients who are further along with their recovery. Mm. Would you like a walk? Yeah, You're going to have to go for a walk. Walking with Rolo helps John Slater, who's a bit unsteady on his feet. Good boy. Good boy. Steady. It's good to have him outside because it's the uneven ground and things. It's good for mobility practice as well. So, yeah. Um, especially when he's excited about the dog as well. Oh. It's so nice to see. When Rolo comes in, it sort of gives you that connection with yeah. outside, doesn't it? it? Gives me that little bit, that little bit of extra boost. Yeah. So that I can, I can say yes, I can do it. I know I can do it. Yeah, this is the kind of stroke I like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and after a hard day's work, Rolo likes nothing better than to stretch his legs. Well, he is a dog. Ready? Come on then. There we go. Come on, Rolo. Look at him. Today was a good day, wasn't it? Oh, it was lovely. Super day. You can see he's just a regular dog. But yet, in the hospital, he's so professional, as you saw. Um, and I think I just wish more people knew about it and more people had a go at doing it. And they can have playtime afterwards. Woo! <laughs> we see dogs being rescued from all kinds of heartbreaking situations. And seeing Rolo at work today and the huge difference he's making to people's recoveries shows that maybe dogs can rescue us too. Coming up, Josie the Labrador proves to be a model patient. You are amazing. Your daddy trained you well. Yeah. And we meet six poorly pups found dumped by a field, now safe in the hands of volunteer fosterers. After they're well, we'll start looking for permanent homes for them. And I believe there's been a lot of interest already. It's 8.15 in South East London, and Anthony Pulfer has just picked up Labrador Josie, whose owner is homeless. He's taking her for emergency treatment for an infected bite wound. OK, good girl. Come on, then. Hi, sausage. Vet Imola Tufan is on the night shift. Where well, this dog has been attacked by another dog yesterday or the day before, and uh, has been trying to bathe it with antiseptic wipes, but it looks like it's become infected. You can see the discharge coming through. Imola needs a closer look at the site of the wound, so she'll need to get some of Josie's fur shaved off. OK, sausage. Let's see how we get this. So oh, sorry. It's okay. Shh, shh, well done. Good girl. Josie's been very brave. Yeah. So basically what happens is when they have a massive infection with bacteria that is enclosed, bacteria really tend to love darkness and moisture, so they're going to grow which happened under the skin. So when they grow, pus will form. That pus needs to be cleared from the wounds by flushing them out with a sterile solution. It's a messy job, so if you're eating your dinner, 
best look away now. <sighs> Told you to look away. Oh, mind the camera. Nearly over Anthony. Poor thing. Yeah, it's just what I thought I'd be doing on a Thursday night. <sighs> now it's OK, cos he's just liquid and blood. It's OK, Jason. It's OK. Good girl. Okay. Brave girl Josie seems to be taking it all in her stride. But her ordeal's not over yet. I'm going to make a small incision in this area just to make sure that the pus and everything that we've done is going to drain out. All right, Josie. Doing very brave, very brave. This is going to carry on draining until everything is cleaned up. Thankfully, Josie has received treatment in the nick of time. It's not life-threatening because uh, we cleaned out the past, we cleaned out the mess. We're going to carry on with um, antibiotics and painkillers um, and hopefully in a few days' time she's going to be absolutely fine. You are amazing. Your daddy trained you well. I really appreciate your help tonight. No worries, that's all we're here for. While she may be in the clear, Anthony still has work to do. Josie has to be returned to her owner. He's staying the night at a friend's flat. RSPCA. Anthony fills the owner in on the news about his four-legged friend. So what the vet's done is they've shaved the area, they've drained two wounds, they had to make an incision in this one to let this draw out. We've got a couple of bits for you. There's two lots of medication. She needs to start medication tonight. As well as her painkillers and antibiotics. Lips, antibiotics, and these are two in the morning and two in the evening. Mm -hmm. The vet has also given Josie a goodie bag. I've also just got you a nice little bit of treats and food from the PDSA, bless them. They just got some bits together. Um, but I know, like you say, she's, she enjoys her food, obviously. Josie will need to be taken for a checkup in a week's time. I'll get my colleague to, to um, give you a shout next Friday and see how you get on. Yeah. They said, you haven't got to make an appointment, just show up. All right. Thanks very much. All right, you take care. I'll speak to you next Friday. It might be nearly midnight, but it's a job well done for Anthony. Although it's taken a few hours to get sorted, it's important to, to give this job this time and to get Josie all the treatment she needed. You could see that the dog loves its owner. To find out more about homeless people and their dogs, I'm catching up with Inspector Anthony Pulfer. So, Anthony, you did a bit of uh, after-hours work there. Yeah, sometimes, you know, we do receive calls that take us into the early hours of the morning. Sort of realise, really, there is no end time to your shifts, really. You never know what you're doing next. Uh, it makes the job very interesting. How often do you encounter problems with dogs belonging to homeless people? It can be quite a regular occurrence, um, and a lot of the times it's when the dog's at most need. Uh, whether it be injured or, or ill at that time. So we're always there to help. And is a much-loved pet. I think maybe it's a misconception of dogs with homeless people that they don't get looked after so well. Do you think that's right? Yeah, what I seem to find when I deal with homeless people with dogs is they're usually the most cared-for dogs. You know, these dogs are, are their life. And uh, I've rarely seen an, an underweight dog, should we say, with a homeless person. They usually would think of their dogs before themselves. Tell me a bit about the charitable help that that those animals can receive. I didn't know about that. There's lots of animal hospitals that have schemes for homeless people where they can present their dogs and get treatment for their animal. That was a pretty gory scene <laughs> in the vets. I, uh, I noticed you turning away. Yeah, I've, uh, the, uh, <laughs> I haven't seen that kind of uh, fountain of... Uh, Discharges yeah, that they're looking for. <laughs> Is that the most impressive fountain you've seen? Yes, <laughs> it was a bit of a sight. It nearly actually got me in the face at one point. Definitely a mouth sort of closed moment. The dog was just sitting there in a trance. Yeah. It was almost pleasurable. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see it cleaned and get, get, getting better. Thank and Josie's you. been back to the vet since, I understand. She has, yeah, and she's all back to health she's now. She's all good. Well, you certainly went above and beyond the call of duty there, Anthony. Thank you. Well done. Keep up the good work. Across England and Wales, there are 59 RSPCA animal centres that cater for dogs in need. But there are also branches of the charity that don't have access to kennels, so any rescued dogs are cared for by a network of volunteer fosterers. Come on. Good 
Oopsie daisy. Come on, garden everybody. Kay Pryor is homing coordinator at the Chiltern branch. A few months ago, she helped to foster six poorly pups found dumped by a field and suspected to have come from a puppy farm. I had a phone call from um, our inspector. She phoned to say, was I able to take any of them? Um, so I asked if she could give me an hour to ring round, um, which I did, and everybody said, yes, we'd like to. Kay took one of the pups herself, six-month-old Lacerapso Boris, who seems to have made himself at home. He's not frightened of other dogs. He quite likes to interact with them. It's with people he struggles, um, he's frightened of them until he, he settles down, realises they're not going to touch him, not going to hurt him, and then he's fine. But people, men especially, he does growl or bark at them. Boris was heavily matted with scabby skin when he was found. Nine days after his rescue, Kay's taking him to see vet Emma Schofield for a checkup. Our little one. Right, so how are we getting on this week? No, he's fine. He's still scratching a lot. Okay. Do you feel there's any less than before? Yes. Well, let's have a look at this then, shall we? Obviously, the skin's going to be something that's ongoing for us. This little yeah. infected patch here yeah. is healing nicely. So once all these scabs come away, I think that should be healed nicely underneath, but I'd like to just leave them intact. Yes. The next step is really just trying to get him on some medication to try and minimise the itchiness. Yeah. Um, yeah. I suspect he has allergic skin disease. So yeah. we'll get some tablets to try and stop the itching. Okay. Um, and we might need to consider a special diet in the future because it could be dietary, the allergy. You know, the allergy cause, so we'll just see how we get on. But I think we're doing very well. Boris is making good progress, and so it seems are the other pups, all in the care of the fostering network. Underweight Puggle, Jojo, and Judy, a Yorkie with fur loss, are living with Vicky Day, who's been fostering for the charity for two years. What's this? What's this? So they really haven't got a clue about toys because they've missed out on that early bit. Most puppies are playing when they're six, seven weeks. Jojo, come on! But they're getting there and they're beginning to play together. After they're well, which we estimate will be probably at least a month's time, we'll start looking for permanent homes for them. But I believe there's been a lot of interest already. Retired teacher Jane Faulkner has been with the fostering group for over 20 years. She's now caring for two shy Bichon Frise cross pups called Timmy and Diana. They're adorable, very, very sweet. Um, they just love running around and it's so enjoyable seeing them come out of themselves and be happy and just be puppies. <coughs> just being totally full of life and carefree <laughs> after what they've been through. They didn't used to play fight, but they've just started play fighting, which is quite nice together. I think it's a sign that they are, yeah, getting back to being normal puppies. The sixth pup, Beagle Lola, is being fostered by Mel. She's also seeing vet Emma about an uncomfortable eye condition. Hello. Through. How are we getting on? Brilliantly. She's doing really Hello. well. Yes. Little nervous, aren't you? She had her lubricating eye drops to go home with. Yes, I've been um, doing that morning, night. Great, yeah, and is she and wiping tolerating them. those well? Yeah, yeah, she's no problem having them. OK, does she pour her eyes at all? No. Great. Obviously, Lola's got what we call cherry eye in both eyes, which is where one of the tear glands of the eyes has popped out of place. Yeah. It's quite unusual in this breed, and it's quite unusual to have it in both eyes, um, and it will require surgical correction, which will basically be us tucking it back in and stitching it in place. Right, OK. And it usually works very well. What I think is probably a good idea for us to do is get her fully vaccinated and then book the surgery in for a couple of weeks' time, which is a little bit bigger. A couple of months on, and there's good news. Lola's had her operation for cherry eye. She's made a full recovery and has been adopted. <laughs> Boris, the lasser apso, is still living with his fosterer, Kay. She couldn't part with him and he's now a permanent fixture and Judy the Yorkie and Jojo the Puggle have also found loving new owners. But what about play-fighting pups Timmy and Diana? <laughs> They're now living with sisters Becky and Charlotte, who helped get the pups to safety when they were first found, making them dog rescuers twice over. The pups were on the side of the road. They were tucked away in the hedge because they were scared. When we first saw the puppies, they were very malnourished. 
It had also been raining very heavily, so they were all very wet and soggy, which was very sad. They were just in an awful state. These two, their fur was, well, they were missing half of it. I wrapped them both up in a towel together and we just sat on the chair having a cuddle whilst I warmed them up. It was absolutely awful when we had to take them to the vets and I had to leave them again because I just wanted them to stay with me. <laughs> a month of fostering later and Rebecca got her wish and the pups now have new names too. Nancy and Albert. They joined a very big family. <laughs> we have nine dogs. Since we've got Albert and Nancy, they've just fitted in straight away. It's almost like they should have always been with us. And with plenty of TLC, both pups have made a full recovery. Now it's like they never had any issues. They're just totally revived, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. We were very smitten with them the day that they were found and to know that they're with us now for the rest of their lives is just lovely. Coming up. <laughs> What's going on? I know, it's lovely. Anthony Joins catches up with rescued staffies Kaya and Kane. They're just lovely, lovely dogs and they've got a lot of life left in them. They're quite senior in their years, but they, they've got a lot of love left to give, haven't you? And if you think you've got what it takes to give a pooch a good home, find out how you can become a dog rescuer. Earlier, Anthony Joins rescued Kaya and Kane after their owner had been caught on CCTV punching Kaya. Hey, Fatin. Hey, bud. How you doing? Anthony has been paying regular visits to both lively staffies. How you doing, matey? <laughs> what? What can we do for you? Hey, come on. Go for a little walk. They've been cared for at Wirral Animal Centre while their case has been ongoing. Come here, I'll let you off, OK? I'll go and get your sister. I'll go and get your sister. I'll go and get your sister. You've got to be good. Kane, Kane, come here. Sit down. Sit. Sit. But it's taken much longer than Anthony had hoped. I'll be back in a minute. I'll be back. Stay. They've been in kennels now for coming up to the one-year anniversary, which is... Tragic, in my opinion. It can only be attributed to the to, to the defendant and the defence, really. They've sort of dragged it out for 12 months. Hey, girl. I know. Come on, then. Should we go and see Kane? Should we go and see Kane? Should we? Come on. Their owner has now pleaded guilty to causing unnecessary suffering to Kaya. What is it? What is it? He was disqualified from keeping dogs for 12 months and given a community order. Here she is. Go on. Go on. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Get away. Get away. But it seems a long stay in kennels hasn't affected the high spirits of this fun-loving pair. <laughs> What's going on? I know. It's lovely. It's so exciting. It's so exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Got me all hot and sweaty, jumping all over me. They're just amazing dogs. They just want human attention and affection. They just want to play. I find it very sad, but I find it quite frustrating as well because, you know, nearly nine years now I've done this job and you don't, you don't really get much more of a cut and dry case as this one. What it should have been, this case, it should have been a, a quiet... Oh, yeah, nice one in the background, Kaya. Is that nice? You rubbing your bum? You rubbing... That's artificial grass. That's a friction burn. You your bum? Are you rubbing your bum? Hey. Right, let me just cut. I was on a serious moment then, guys. Knock it off. Sorry, as you were saying, Anthony. The defendant pleaded guilty just some eight months ago. And, um, and then, quite dramatically and quite frustratingly, the, that guilty plea was then um, rescinded and, and, and that guilty plea was, was, um, was given to the courts. We've literally just concluded the trial, um, two-day trial, which ended up going into a third day. And on the third day of the trial, the defendant pleaded guilty again. Come on. Come on, Kaya. Good girl. Well done. You remove animals because you're doing your best for them and you want them to have a better life. And the fact that they've come into kennels and then waited for over a year now is just really sad.
Well, I have some fantastic news. After 534 days in the charity's care, Kai and Kane were rehomed together with Shillet Denisa. And here they are. Hello. Nice to see you. And you? How are you getting on with them? Very well, thank you. I've had stuffs all my life. Have you? Yep. So I was really familiar with the breed. I just felt that they were for me. So what were they like when they first came home? They were absolutely delighted. So they were quite lively? Yes, very lively. Jumped on the sofa, licked my face, couldn't stop smiling from ear to ear. It was almost like they knew what had happened. They'd been rescued and... So, 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 so yeah. straight away, it was... Straight away, straight away. They fantastic. Didn't, they didn't even look back at all. You've got a nice life now. <laughs> it's got, he makes noises Close like it. an actual pig. He does. Here's my little black ball. <laughs> Do you want to find some Thank truffles? You. Yes, he does. <laughs> Mummy won't let him have truffles. Well, thank you so much for bringing them along. Thank you. As you've seen in the programme, Many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them, and there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. This is Henry. Henry is a Staffordshire Bull Terrier crossbreed. He's around 18 months old. His previous owners didn't really do much socialisation or training with him. It made him a little bit more difficult to rehome. Good lad. We've done the training and the socialisation, so his progress is really good. And he does now know some basic commands. Sit. Henry Paw. Good boy. Henry down. He's looking for an active home with adult owners who can carry on with his training. Down. Stay down. Good boy. He just loves being outside playing with his toys, so if you can give him that, he'll be happy. What's this, do a drink? He would like to be the only pet, just so he can have the family's full attention on him. He's crazy, fun, but extremely loving. Good boy. Henry really deserves a forever home now. He has learned so much. He's such a lovely dog, and someone's really missing out on a lovely family member. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. Oh, that stinks. Two dogs living in a cold and dirty shed are rescued from a puppy trafficker. So this one, again, back in its washing up bowl, probably because that's the warmest place for it. The miraculous recovery of two bald and defenceless Lassa Apso puppies dumped in a garden. They must have been absolutely freezing. If they'd have been found any later, they might not have been with us today. Oh. And I'll be finding out what happens when breeding for looks goes too far. <laughs> <laughs>